Hey everyone, and welcome to this weekend worship at Sunny Hills Church. I really like um, orange marmalade. In fact, one of my favorite sandwiches is just a jelly sandwich with, with orange marmalade. And the thing I like to do uh, with the marmalade, as you know, is to get that very last little bit of, of marmalade out of the jar at the bottom. And uh, that's kind of what the sermon is about today. I want you to be able to get every last bit of God's grace, every last bit of the, that good faith experience to really dive deep into your faith. And that's what Paul talks about in Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. So I've entitled today's message, Am I Experiencing Full Life in Christ? Now, in order to answer that question, I've got a few questions. Other questions I want to ask you, and the first one is, have I grown up? Have I grown up? I'm 61 years old, and uh, I'm not walking around in diapers anymore. Uh, I'm trying to act like a man, uh, behave like a man, and uh, act with maturity. You know, we all start off as, as babies, and we go through our life experiences, from cradle to grave, and along the way, uh, God reveals himself to us in the person of Jesus, and we respond in faith to that. And so it's very important, and Paul covers this in the scripture selection for today, to move from spiritual um, childhood into your full status as a grown-up believer and heir of the kingdom of God. So let's look at that this morning from Galatians 3. 1 through 3. Paul says, think of it this way. I, I love the way Paul reasons with the Galatian church. Remember, they were being pushed back into legalism by some uh, bad actors in their congregation, people that are, I mean, they believe in Christ, they embrace the cross, but they just can't let go of those old legalistic ways. And so Paul is reasoning with them, trying to fully embrace the cross without the need to go back to that self-effort of pleasing God through your own works. And so he says, think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better off than the slaves until they grow up. Uh, kind of the idea here is that the children don't get to use or to utilize the full measure of their inheritance because they're under the guardianship of uh, one of the servants or slaves in the home. So there's a nanny or someone that's raising the children. And of course, they still have to brush their teeth and go to bed on time. They're not, the children aren't in charge yet. They're waiting for their inheritance to come full force. And so they're not better off uh, than the slaves until they grow up, even though they actually own everything the father had. They have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their father set. And that's the way it was with us before Christ came. Remember last week we talked a little bit about uh, how the law was like a guardian or a pedagogue, a, a teacher, a trainer to help us discover God, but it was a, a temporary measure until the coming of Christ. And that's why Paul says, let me put it another way. And he's giving this example of a family situation uh, where the children are becoming heirs. And that's the way it was before Christ came. We were like the children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. And so, of course, a guardian who's taking care of small children, there are rules that you have to obey. Uh, the children would have to uh, be subject, even though they owned everything, they were subject to those governing rules. And so it was, Paul says, in the olden days, under the curse of the law, you were like these small children. But he wants us to understand that the time has come, that there's a need for us to grow up. Look at this from 1 Peter Verses two through three, like newborn babes, you must crave pure spiritual milk. So in one sense, this is Peter now talking, and he's he's encouraging people to act, even though they're adults, even though they're spiritually mature. He says, remember how it was? Well, I, mean, I don't remember how it was when I was a baby, 
but I've certainly seen babies gobbling down a bottle or, or crying out for that milk. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. We're not intended to remain as children, but we're always to have that desire for rich nourishment from God. Cry out for this nourishment, he says, now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. But not everyone grows up. Now, today's sermon is about uh, enjoying the full benefits of the Christian faith and not leaving anything on the table. Uh, ringing out that every last bit of joy and hope and love that the Christian faith has for us. But not everyone uh, is growing up in maturity. Some of us are stuck in our baby days. Here's Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14, which describes the condition of some people uh, who belong to the family of God. There is much more we would like to say about this, but it is difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. You've been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. The writer of Hebrews is scolding these who have remained in their infant or childlike state. They haven't matured in their faith. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. And you are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. So solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. So look back over the entirety of your Christian walk with Christ. Are you growing? Are you maturing in your faith? Or are you still stuck on those same small things that you were stuck on years ago? So it's very important to, to grow up and to get off the spiritual milk, although you continue to cra you crave spiritual growth and desire. But you get off the milk and you start maturing to, to more, uh, more difficult things, more um, intriguing matters. And so you might do that by uh, doing an online Bible study or just by going deeper in your own Bible, by being involved in the Wednesday growth groups, maybe by starting a Bible study in your own home and inviting others to attend. But we're no longer babies. We, we grow up. And that's how you enjoy the fullness of God's blessing and for faith. The second thing is, Am I really free to embrace my adoption? Uh, here's a blank certificate of adoption. You can write your name in there. This is to certify that Alan Wilder has been formally adopted into the family of God by Jesus Christ and the finished work on the cross. I would have written in uh, to the date, I think it was like October 11th or maybe 17th of 1977 when I was 17 years old. I was adopted into the family of God by receiving Christ as my Savior. Let's see what Galatians 4, 4 and 5 say. But when the right time came, God sent his son. I love what I think the King James maybe says, when the fullness of time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And so you can see here, there's a little bit of a process going on. We used to be enslaved by the law, but now we're not anymore because of what Christ did for us on the cross. Now we've been adopted into God's very own family. Look what it, Galatians 5.1 says. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in the slavery to the law. The Galatians were free, but they allowed someone to bewitch them, someone to fool them, someone to trick them into the old ways of trusting, not in what Jesus did for them on the cross, but to trust in their own ability to follow the law. So let me give you two um, tips to help you uh, from getting tied up in slavery to the to the law again. So a couple things just off the top of my head. First of all, 
quit running away from sin. Now, there are times when uh, something pops up on your computer screen or you're in the break room and someone's gossiping or they're telling off-color jokes and you just need to leave. You need to, to leave the area, sure. But instead of continually running away from sin, I think if you'll run to God instead. I mean, what you're focusing on, when, you, when you're running away from something, you tend to look back over your shoulder to see if it's still following you, you know? Uh, running away from a bear. Uh, don't focus on the bear. Focus on where you need to go. Run to God, not away from X, Y, Z, or whatever it is that is causing you trouble. Secondly, surround yourself with good friends and good music and good influences. I listen to K-Love on my phone and uh, on my computer at, at work and at home. We listen to Pandora. I've got a mix of Christian music on my Pandora app. Then in the car, we have the radio tuned to Christian stations so that I'm continually being encouraged by what's going into my mind. Boy, your mind is so important. Look at this Bible verse from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Hey, there's a simple truth I've highlighted here on the bottom of the screen on this slide. Either or. Either God is using you to transform this world or the world's customs and culture uh, is transforming you. Either you're changing the world or the world is changing you. So the second question I had for you today was, am I free to adopt, to embrace my adoption as a child of God? And so I need to begin to surround myself with things that will bring me up and lift me up and encourage my brain to get in line with God's will for my life. Thirdly, can I respond to the prompting of the Spirit? Galatians 4, 6 says, Paul continues, and because we are his children, adopted in, isn't that great? Remember that adoption certificate? Alan Wilder, adopted into the family of God by Jesus' finished work on the cross. October 17th, 1977. What a day that was. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba, Father. Now, the word Abba here is the Aramaic word. It's just a, a common word in the household that maybe a child might call out to address her dad. You know, her, maybe daddy is a modern day translation of that. It denotes several things, of course, like, Daddy, I trust you. I love you. You're providing a safe place for me to grow up. And then acceptance of the Father's will. I know sometimes a teenager will kind of coax up, you know, get close to her dad and say, now, Daddy, I'd like the car keys tonight. And um, she's not maybe interested in the Father's will at that moment. Maybe she has other plans. But generally, when we address our earthly fathers as children, we recognize that they have uh, reign over us. They're, they're in charge. And that's comforting to be cared for by a loving earthly father. I know that not everyone has had that experience. I lost my dad this past January, and boy, I, you know, I still miss him. I think of him often. Um, and he loved me. And when I was a kid, he, he put up some guardrails in, uh, in my life. He put up a literal guardrail on the top bunk of my bed so I wouldn't roll out onto the floor and get hurt and looking after my safety. But there were other things. He had rules and things in mind. And so uh, a loving father, even the heavenly father today, will still guide us and direct us. But it's the love and not the rules that I remember about my dad. Mark chapter 15, verse 36 is a time when Jesus addressed the Heavenly Father as his Abba, his daddy. 
Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. And so when we address our Heavenly Father as Abba, we're recognizing that his will is paramount in our lives. Now, do I expect my inheritance? I'm a child of God, adopted in, and not only that, I'm an heir to God Almighty's kingdom. Isn't that awesome? Now, you are no longer a slave, a slave to the customs and habits of this world. We've let go of those things. We're, we're running to God, and those things no longer have sway over us. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Now, this whole passage identifies you know, the different members of God's household, so to speak. There's the father, the young child, the kind of the child that's growing up, the guardian who might also be a slave, and then God's very own adopted child. And then he talks about here that you were once a young child, then you became a child. Uh, while you were under the guardianship, you are still a slave to the rules of the household. But uh, but now you're an heir uh, out of all of these identities and titles. That heir, that title of heir is most fascinating to me. In fact, look at First Peter chapter one, verses three through four. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we've been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. We have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Hey, I'm approaching retirement age, and I've always thought, you know, when I get to retirement age, will those Social Security checks be there? You know, with rising, raising taxes and just the ins and outs of government, I've always wondered, you know, will that money be there when I retire? Now, that's not an inheritance. Uh, and I hope to have it, but I don't really, I'm not counting on it. I've, you know, saved money along the way. I have a retirement fund that I've poured into. Uh, but boy, is it ever different with God's inheritance. I don't have to wonder, is it going to be there? I don't have to wonder whether or not God's going to come through uh, with my heavenly inheritance. It's going to be there, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change. And decay. Look, my life should be marked by this great expectation of what lies in safety for me. There's a priceless inheritance. One thing that I've done from time to time, and I'm almost, I'm not ashamed to say this, but it, I'm not really where I need to be in this area. Uh, I wake up in the morning and I think, first of all, <laughs> I didn't used to do this, I do it now, but what is today? Is it Sunday? Is it Wednesday? And then I, in my mind, I rehearse like my tasks and duties and my obligations for the day. And I think, is this going to be a good day? And that's wrong thinking, right? Because I'm, I'm basing my expectation and hopes in what I have to do. And it's all about me and my effort and what's going on in my world that day. And I realize that many times I forget that I'm a child of the king, that I have a grand inheritance, and that today is a day that God has given me to relish in my status as his heir. And so my life should be marked by great expectations, not of what my calendar says, not of what the routine events of my life are, but because of my status as a free and forgiven child of God. What a difference that would make. And here's my main point for today. Faith in the finished work of Christ, his work on the cross for us, that's what enables full devotion to God and enjoying the benefits of deep relationship with him. And the Galatians had gotten away with that. They were going back to their daily calendars and like what they were going to do, their hope was coming from themselves. And Paul says, what are you thinking? Stop that. Your faith 
Your hope is in what Jesus did for you on the cross and not on your own self-effort. And here's the prayer for today. Pretty simple, I think. Let me read the prayer first, and then we'll bow our heads, and I'll close with this prayer. I suggest we finish something like this. Dear God, we want to experience all you have for us, to kind of dig out that last little bit from the jar. Help us to expect the best, become a mature believer, and respond quickly to the Spirit's prompting. You're our Abba, and we are your sons and daughters, heirs of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hey, let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear God, we want to experience all you have for us, so help us to expect the best and to become a mature believer, to respond quickly to the Spirit's prompting. You are indeed our Abba, and we are your sons and daughters, heirs of the King of kings and Lord of lords. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, hope you have a great weekend and that the Lord continues to lead you into maturity and to his joy.